So for more on this now, I want to bring in Soraya Ali in Amman, Jordan. She is with Save the Children. She joins us now. Soraya, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I want to begin with this development today that we're seeing that Rafah border crossing has been open for limited evacuations. How much of a difference does that make? You know, we, of course, are welcoming of this decision and we're glad to see that the border crossing has opened. Um, but what we know we need is more numbers. We need more numbers of people being able to get through the crossing. And we also need greater numbers of aid going through in Gaza. The situation in Gaza is absolutely dire and it is continuing to deteriorate. Right now, we know that over 8,500 people have been killed and over 3,500 children have been killed. I mean, that's one child killed every 10 minutes. The situation is getting worse and the only way to ensure the protection of civilians and children is for all parties to adhere to a ceasefire. In terms of that situation that you're describing inside Gaza right now, how much more insight do you have on the challenges that people there are facing? It's extremely challenging, the situation that people, including our staff, are facing. So our staff, just like ordinary civilians, have had to flee their homes. We know that 1.4 million people have been displaced inside Gaza. Right now, in shelters in the south of Gaza, we've got thousands of people build, uh, sheltering in places that were built for, you know, one or 2,000 people. One shelter we know currently has 22,000 people. And those people are rationing things like water. There's a complete lack of safe, clean drinking water. They are rationing food. And we know medical supplies are running low and hospitals are running extremely and dangerously low on fuel. Now, of course, uh, when it comes to the organization Save the Children, we want to focus in on the situation that, of course, young individuals, children are facing who are experiencing this right now. Now, your organization has said that more children have been killed in Gaza since October 7th than in all global conflicts annually since 2019. That's according to numbers uh, that uh, your organization has received uh, from the Gaza Health Ministry run by Hamas. So I'm wondering what the impact of this situation, living through it, and then also being, of course, wounded uh, throughout this, as we know that you've described so many of those deaths and injuries as well, the, the ongoing impact, the long-term impact of that. Mm. So, yeah, as our figures have stated, over 3,000 children were talking about being killed in just three weeks. We also know around 1,000 children are missing, presumed to be under the rubble. And as you said, the long-term impact of the children that are alive are going to be extraordinarily significant. We've seen through our previous reporting that the impact on children, that conflict has on children, is devastating and far-reaching. They have higher levels of things like anxiety and depression. And even for children who are maybe too small to understand what's going on, they can see what's happening, they can hear and they can feel. And we know that this is going to have a long-lasting impact on their health, both physically and mentally. We also want to focus in on one of the developments that we saw just in the last 24 hours, and that was an airstrike that hit a refugee camp. And what we're wondering here is what have you heard from your colleagues in regards to the aftermath from that airstrike? So as we know today, there's also been a complete communications blackout in Gaza, one of many. This continues to happen. And we're still truthfully trying to get in touch with a lot of our colleagues. I don't have the specific details or numbers of casualties on that attack. But I think what it speaks to is the wider situation of what's going on in Gaza right now. We're seeing a death toll that continues to rise. We know that on one side, aid is not getting in quickly enough. And on the other side, there are children and civilians wounded who need to get out all the while while violence continues to escalate. So the only thing that's going to ensure the protection of these civilians and these children is a ceasefire. All parties absolutely need to adhere to a ceasefire, say is enough is enough and stop the violence and also adhere to the rules of international humanitarian law. And that means civilian spaces and infrastructure like schools, like hospitals must and absolutely should be protected. Soraya, thank you for joining us today. We appreciate it.
Thank you so much for having me. That is Soraya Ali. She is a global media manager for Middle East and North African at Save the Children.